Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. Today we are now looking at angles. So last lesson we kind of revised how to find the side of a uh, right angle triangle using trigonometry. So today we are going to move on and look at angles. Very similar stuff. There's not a whole lot of difference apart from one major thing. Um, and hopefully you remember how to do that. Um, just remembering, please, soccer toa. That's what we looked at last lesson, soccer toa. Making sure, of course, in your triangle, okay, we're looking at our opposite, our adjacent, and looking at our hypotenuse and identifying which rule that we are using. That's the most important thing, of course. And then once you create your equation, we want to go and solve it. Very similar today, um, but there's a little trick to it, which hopefully you remember. I'm going to look at these three questions again. Feel free to pause it and have a crack at these three questions. You will notice the first one is simply just a review of last lesson, the sides. Um, and then example two and three, of course, we'll start delving into the find the angles. And you can see my rounding is a little bit different for each of those questions. So let's see if you remember how to do that. All right, how'd you go? So the first one, remember, pause if you haven't done so and have a crack at the questions first. But hopefully you have done that. So I'm going to look at this question in regards to 60 degrees. We have the opposite side. We have the hypotenuse side. So opposite and hypotenuse, hopefully you're remembering, that's going to be our sine rule. Opposite over hypotenuse. So my first step is to write in sine 60 equals my opposite of 3 over my hypotenuse of x. That's I want to see that. I don't want to see you skipping that step. That's my first part. If you want to go ahead and say this is my answer, then I'm okay with that for the next part. Absolutely. But I would probably in year 10, I'd be expecting to see some working out. For example, you might remember that these two things can simply swap because the denominator is the variable. Other, If you're not sure of that, times the x across and then divide by the sine 60. Either way, that's what you should see. Okay, if you can't remember that, go back and look at last lesson. Now I'm going to simply get my calculator out. I'm going to type in uh, 3 divided by sine 60, I believe, or 3 over sine 60. Okay, we get 3.4641, put the dot. I'm going to now sign off. It says to 2 sig fig, so 3 is my first, 4 is the second, the 6 as it rounds up. So 3.5 and my unit is centimetres. Hopefully you got that question right. Otherwise, you need to get back and do some work on sides. Okay. Now, example two, we start looking at the angles. The first part of this is no different to what you were doing yesterday, or last lesson, should I say. Um, the first things first is, to, of course, to identify what rule am I using. Well, in regards to my angle, now my angle is not there, I get that. But I have got theta. That's my unknown angle. It's like having an X or a Y or a Z there, but it's an angle. We can use theta. We might use things like alpha, okay, even beta. But generally, theta is what we'll use. Now, in regards to the theta, we have been given the adjacent side, which is the 15. And we've been given the hypotenuse side, which means that we are using CAH car. All right. Nothing is different from last example or yesterday's work. So I'm going to write down cos theta. I don't know what my angle is. The adjacent is 15 and my hypotenuse is 20. So like you saw yesterday or last lesson, that each time I have one unknown and two other pieces of information. It just happens so that this time my unknown is my angle. So I could, if I wanted to, I could simplify 15 over 20. I could put it as a decimal, like a 0.75. I could do that. I don't really see much benefit of doing that, but I absolutely could. Um, you could simplify it to three over four if you wanted to. You could do that as well. Um, lots of things that you could do with this. However, we want to find what theta is. Now, this becomes a bit of a predicament, and you might remember this from year nine, or your year nine accelerated stuff, that technically speaking, it looks like there is a multiplication next to the, co the cos, right? The cosine, the cos. Cos times theta. Now, not really, but let's say that there is. You know, let's say it is cos times theta. Well, that means you do something like this. Let's say, just for argument's sake, we use the 0.75, we divide it by cos. Now, if, if I try that in my calculator, you're going to get a big fat math error. Why? You cannot have cos on its own because it's kind of like saying cos zero, cos nothing. Like it's, 
And later on, yes, cause cause zero is one. I get that, but certainly it's going to be an issue because you can't divide by cause without having a number next to it. it makes it very difficult. And of course, if I times it by cause zero, it's yeah, it makes it all difficult. We can't do that. Now, if I revise back to our indices work, however, can you remember another way to write that in index form? Well, hopefully you remember that could look like this, cos the negative one. And that, my friends, is a key that's on your calculator. In fact, it's above the, co the cos button. So if you look in your calculator now, you will see the cos, it's the second one out of three, and above it in yellow writing, it will say cos the negative one. So what we can do is, in fact, is this. Cos negative one, we can have our 15 over 20 there. Or if you want, you can have your cos negative one, 0 0.75, whatever you want to have, that's fine, to get my answer. So the big idea here, whenever you find an angle, no matter what rule, even when we do non-right angle down the track, whenever you find an angle, you must press shift at some stage. Okay? If you don't press shift at all, then something's going to miss. Okay? Because when you find an angle, you need to separate the, the theta and the sine cos of 10, but we can't divide by those things. So we have to do cos negative 1, sine negative 1, tan negative 1. So in this instance, I'm now going to grab my calculator out. I'm going to just press shift and I'm going to type in cos. And you'll see it comes up in your calculator as cos negative 1. I'm going to type in 15 over 20. You could do your decimal if you wanted to or your simplified fraction. There's no problems there. I'm going to type it in and it says 41.4096 dot, dot, dot. Now, of course, my question in this case said to the nearest degree. I may as well have said the nearest whole number because that's what the nearest degree is. So this would just be 41 degrees. And I wonder how many of you remembered how to do that last year. Okay, so 41 degrees. I'm hopefully this is kind of, you know, reminding you on how to do this stuff. Um, again, I'm aware some of you, particularly Mr. Finch's class, might not have done this before. So this might be a little bit of a step in progress. I'll add another video there for you to, to kind of go a bit more detail. Okay, example three, last example. Let's see how you go with this question. If you haven't had a crack at this one because you didn't know how to do it, maybe have a crack at it now and see what happens. This question, gents, it's almost the same as question two. The only real difference, of course, is I've asked you to the nearest minute, and we'll talk about that when we, when we get to that last part. The same steps absolutely follow from what we've just been doing. First step, whether you're flying a side or an angle, always find the rule that you're using, the ratio, sine, cos, or tan. So in this case, I can see my opposite is the 10. My adjacent is my A, or sorry, my 8, because again, opposite is opposite the angle in question, and the adjacent is the angle, the side next to my angle in question. Um, once I've done that, I can say, okay, I'm using TOA. My 10 or opposite and adjacent is TOA. I'm going to write in 10. Now, I don't have an angle there, so I'm going to put my theta. We have my opposite, and we have my adjacent, 10 over 8. Again, if you want to go and put that as a decimal, we go for it. If you want to put that as a simplified fraction, 5 over 4, go for it. There's no real benefit in my view. I'm now going to say, well, I want to find out what theta is, so I'm going to divide by 10, but we can't do that. So I'm going to say 10, negative 1 and 10 on 8. Now, I know you might say, Can I, can't I just go and put my answer? And the answer is yeah, because I want that first line definitely, and then at least the answer. However, a lot of boys, particularly when we're starting this for the first couple of years, we often forget that we have to do the shift 10, shift sign, shift cos, cos for our angles. So I think it's really important to, to actually write in the 10 negative 1 there, the sign or the cos negative 1, because it helps you to remember that you're pressing your sign. So let's do it now. Shift uh, 10, and I'm going to do 10 on 8, or if you want to simplify the fraction or rise a decimal, you can. Now press equals, and we now get 51.34019 dot, dot, dot. You notice how I generally always write my answer out, the whole, whole answer. I like that, okay, because then you can now round it, and then you can start to work from there. Now, of course, if it's the nearest uh, degree, 51 degrees, no problems. But this now wants the nearest minute. If it's at the one decimal place, 51.3 degrees. You can have decimals. But this wants in terms of degrees, minutes, and seconds. So I'm going to come back to that bubble button. If I now, with my answer in my calculator there, if I simply press the bubble button again, now, 
all of a sudden, guess what it does? It changes it into degrees, minutes, and seconds. So it looks like this. 51 degrees, 20 minutes. That's that notation I was talking about. And then that 24.69 seconds. You can see that's the official notation. Your calculator will do that. Now, what we want, that's, of course, degrees. That's minutes, and that's seconds. We want to round to the nearest minute, which means that's the one that we're rounding, the 20, normally. 20 or 21, like we normally do with rounding. We look at the next one that tells what happens to it, 24.69. Now, the problem with this rounding, of course, is now we're talking about seconds and minutes. It's no longer that magic number of five out of 100. That magic number is now 30, because 30 seconds okay, is half of a minute. 30 minutes is half of a degree. So is 24.69 above 30 or 30 and above? No, it's not. So we're just going to say 51 degrees and 20 minutes. If it said 30 minute, uh, 30 seconds or 31 seconds, it'd be 21 minutes. Okay. So again, you can see how these questions can be a bit more challenging because now I'm now adding in that rounding um, of the degrees or minutes. Um, if it's just seconds, then I'll write my screen out as it stands. Um, so again, you've got three ways that we could write this. We could write it to the nearest degree, nearest minute. Or we can, in fact, do decimal places as well. So just have to have a crack at some of these questions and answer it. Either way, step one, like I've said with any of these questions, whether you're finding a side or an angle, okay, I'm going to say label the sides given. Okay, so I talk about opposite adjacent hypotenuse. Just two of them. Two, choose or identify the ratio. Of course, I'm talking about my sine cos 10. Three, write your equation out. So, for example, sine theta equals 10 over 5, whatever it might be. And then four, we want to solve our equation. And then if I add it in a five, I might say round appropriately. Something like that. So that's again, works for sides or angles. Just means if you're finding an angle, you gotta press shift, okay? Really, really important. If you don't, you're gonna get an angle that's like super small, like 0 0.12 degrees. And although it's possible, very, very unlikely you're gonna have an angle under one degree because you think about a triangle like that, it's tiny, okay? So be careful. Have a crack at the questions. Make sure your calculator is in degrees mode. Any problems, shoot me a message in Canvas. Apart from that, hope you're well. Hope you're enjoying your time.